Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Picking up from where we left off last week, on Saturday, June 12th, the minister in the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for public affairs, the Honourable Kwame McCoy, distributed 200 food hampers to residents of Tigerbone, Banakari and Waikabra along the Suzdak Linden Highway. The distribution is part of national efforts to provide support to flood-affected residents. Minister McCoy said the government's priority is to ensure that people are safe. Its secondary concern is the security of animals. We are working to make sure that we protect and save the animals. Um, in some cases, it wasn't successful because the water levels were so high, some animals died. But we are trying to protect and to save the animals and the livestock uh, where necessary and also to be able to work as, as the situation gets better, the water recede, to be able to help. The bottom line is that the government will help um, communities and farmers and households to get back on their feet and to create a situation where they could continue to make their livelihood through farming. Minister McCoy said the torrential rainfall is due to climate change and people need to be mindful of their environment. Minister McCoy also visited Hillfoot to observe the ongoing emergency drainage works which have already started to reduce flooding in the area. The private sector has been commended for its support of government's COVID-19 vaccination campaigns. Minister of Health, the Honourable Dr. Frank Anthony, on June 12 expressed gratitude to Movie Town Ghana and Masse Stores Ghana for collaborating with the Ministry to host the drive through initiative held at Movie Town's parking lot and at the Ghana National Stadium at Providence. That drive through vaccination exercise continued on Sunday at both venues. The Abari Conservancy has been declared intact following an assessment led by Minister of Agriculture, the Honourable Zulfikar Mustafa, last weekend. Water along a concrete wall known as a spillway is relieving the conservancy of excess water. The excess water is spilling, uh, indeed. It's going to the Barbies River. The conservancy is 14 inches above the normal level here that they, it's spilling right now. And this has been a continuous process over the last month. The minister said he was pleased that since taking office, the spillway has been maintained. He said no works were done under the former administration. Additionally, Minister Mustafa noted that the government is ensuring the Conservancy Dam is protected. Meanwhile, the public was urged to donate blood to the National Blood Bank on the observance of World Blood Donor Day during the past week. One of the things that um, we really need is, is blood so that persons who require surgery and persons um, who require emergency surgery at that uh, they oftentimes require blood, and if it's not in adequate supplies, then we can lose that patient. So we want to appeal to persons to come out and donate blood. The minister is encouraging people to become members of the existing donors club, which would allow them to donate blood regularly. There is always need for more blood, with the demand constantly outstripping the supply. Dr. Anthony notes that it is safe to donate blood in the COVID-19 environment as COVID is not a blood-borne disease. Member of Parliament, the Honourable David Patterson, has been removed as Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee. This follows the passage of a motion in the National Assembly early Tuesday morning, which was tabled by Minister of Parliamentary Affairs and Governance, the Honourable Gil Teixeira. Mr. Patterson was removed after refusing to step down as chairman when the committee was examining mismanagement in a ministry where he served as minister. Mr. Speaker, worse yet, having not been satisfied that he hadn't put the motion, we had to bring an, 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 a motion to put the motion on the agenda. Having done that, he then deliberately, the chairperson deliberately, then refused to deal with the motion and went to all the other mo issues even though we kept trying to move that the motion be put to the vote. Minister Tushera noted that Mr. Patterson ignored directives and advice from the clerk and the Speaker of the National Assembly which left the government with no choice but to seek his removal by way of the House. How can a chair of any committee 
be found to be violating standing orders openly and repeatedly, be allowed to continue in that position. The Parliament of Guyana cannot allow the level of any chairperson in any committee to believe that they are somehow impervious to democratic rule. The motion to have Mr. Patterson removed was passed after contributions from more than a dozen government and opposition MPs and ran until after 5 a.m. Tuesday. The Agriculture Ministry on Monday secured $1.5 billion in supplementary funding from the National Assembly to offset critical capital works at the Ghana Sugar Corporation, Gaisuko. Minister Mustafa told the House that the money would be injected into the sugar company in keeping with government's objective to revitalize the industry. We are continuing to restructure Gaisuko. There are critical parts that are needed to rehabilitate and recapitalize on the present estate and also to reopen the closed sugar estate that you all closed. Still in the National Assembly Monday, the House has approved $10 billion in supplementary funding to boost government's ongoing flood relief efforts nationwide. Prime Minister, the Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips, said the additional money is essential and will provide meaningful support to hundreds of communities. Over 30,000 households have been affected by the flooding. There are roads that are damaged. There are households that are affected. There are animals that are affected. We have to feed almost everyone in over 180 communities in our hinterland because all their farms are affected by this flood. And that will have to go on, who knows, for the next three months until the water subsides. Meanwhile, more than 18,000 residents will soon be able to access portable water after the National Assembly approved $683.5 million for water service during its Monday sitting. Minister of Housing and Water, the Honorable Colin Kroll, says 18,800 residents in 35 communities from regions 3, 4, 5 and 6 will benefit. Villages along the Suzdike Linden Highway will also benefit from this allocation. Minister Kroll says works will be executed by staff of the Ghana Water Incorporated and hired contractors. Also on Monday evening, the National Assembly approved $186.4 million dollars to facilitate more infrastructural works through the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports Ground Enhancement Program. Minister the Honorable Charles Ramson Jr. told the House that the Ministry has already exhausted its budget to undertake several ground enhancement works across the country. Ground enhancement, the, the line is called ground enhancement. It forms part of what communities do for their community grounds which includes playing of sports, but it's not only for the playing of sports. It is a community ground for which all kinds of activities occur there, which in social activities, it's used for training, all of their the, the pavilions, etc. They're all used for different purposes, which includes some of them are being used for medical purposes at times. Of this sum, $10 million will be allocated for the development of community grounds in Region 10. Approval was also given for $619 million to purchase more COVID-19 vaccines. Dr. Anthony, who gave a breakdown of the purchases, says the vaccines are necessary to inoculate the country's adult population against COVID-19. Meanwhile, an additional $623 million supplementary budget sought by the Ministry of Public Works to support the infrastructure of the Demerara Harbour Bridge was approved. Defending the request, Minister of Public Works, the Honorable Bishop Juan Edgel, recalled that upon assuming office last year, he discovered that the bridge was in a dire state and warranted emergency intervention. The monies that are sought here is to effect the much needed repairs on span 9 and span 10 of the Demerara Harbor Bridge. Span 9 and Span 10 are the two retractor spans. They have a number of damages and breakages. 
An additional $412 million, aside from the $623 million, was also sought for repair to the bridge's anchorage system. Government will also be distributing some 350 new house lots in Charity Region 2, Pomeroon, Supernam, as it forges ahead to fulfill its promise of delivering 50,000 house lots in five years. Minister Kroll made this announcement on Monday as he sought approval for an additional $2.8 billion. We will be in Region Number 2 next week on the 25th to allocate 350 in Charity. Meanwhile, Minister Teixeira has refuted as malicious and deluded a Facebook post made by Opposition Member of Parliament, Annette Ferguson, on Wednesday. The post incorrectly stated that a supplementary provision approved for the Ghana Defence Force in the National Assembly on Monday would be used to set up black clothes debt squads. This is, has nothing to do with any um, black clothes group. This is not a resuscitation of anything. This is a new initiative by the government through the Ghana Defence Board to be able to reduce the level of crime, to be able to have better access to information and intelligence sharing between agencies in order to make our society safer, to be able to make our people live in a safer environment. The approved supplementary provision for the GDF amounted to over $700 million. The minister noted that the majority of the items to be sourced are related to the regional joint support teams of the GDF and the police. This is a decision of the Defence Board and the implementation commenced in April 2021. The regional support joint support teams are made up of the Ghana Defence Force and the Ghana Police Force. This is an operational issue to enhance our capabilities to fight crime. Agriculture Minister Mustafa is again calling on the Georgetown Mayor and City Council to put better systems in place to help mitigate flooding in the city. The minister made this appeal after checking several pumps and sluices in the city on Wednesday. Last night when our engineers were checking to see those pumps and sluice that are operable, what he found that the, uh, the Rumvelt sluice was not uh, uh, operating because the operator was not there. While the Agriculture Ministry is doing its part to ensure the pumps are functioning, Minister Mustafa said the City Council must also honour its responsibilities, especially since a lackadaisical approach could affect the people. There was no one from the um, City Council to check, no one from the City Council to check to see if the operators are operating these pumps or the sluices. So I spoke to the town clerk this morning and I told her in no uncertain terms that they have to have a mechanism to check. We are not getting the cooperation from the city council. The government has slammed remarks from opposition leader Joseph Harmon, who last week questioned the safety and authenticity of the Sputnik V vaccines without offering any proof to support his claims. The health minister noted that the vaccine is safe and effective for protecting against COVID-19. Initially, the vaccine's effectiveness was rated at 94.1%, but with new population data, it is now at 97% and is ranked as one of the most effective against COVID-19. So there's no doubt about the efficacy of the vaccine. There's no doubt about the safety of the vaccine. This vaccine works. And more recently, this vaccine has been working against all the variants that we have seen so far. Dr. Anthony dubbed Mr. Harmon's comments as not only ill-informed, but also reckless and malicious. Minister McCoy stated that the opposition leader's remark was an attempt to create panic. The APNU AFC opposition is certainly at it again, trying to destroy Guyana in their desperate attempts to remain relevant following their spectacular defeat at the March 2020 elections. Only this time, they are heartlessly attempting to score cheap political points using the national COVID-19 vaccination drive intended to save lives as a weapon against Guyanese. The government maintained that it will continue to use the vaccine as part of its COVID-19 immunization campaign.
The Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport has thrown its support behind several Tokyo-bound athletes. They will be representing Ghana at the Tokyo Olympics and Summer Paralympics. Athletes include table tennis player Chelsea Edgel, boxer Kevin Alicock, cyclist Walter Grant Stewart and track and field sprinter Leah Abrams. Minister Ramson said the support is to help the athletes perform at their potential. Currently, their airfares and uh, accommodations are both taken care of. So we are currently giving them each a thousand US dollars to take with them when they go on their trip uh, for their own leisure and, and to assist with their time while they're there. The Tokyo Olympics is scheduled from July 23 to August 8 and the Paralympics Games are from August 24 to September 5. Residents of Kokwani Region 10 have been assured by the government that systems are being put in place to address the flooding there. Works Minister Bishop Edgel, Agriculture Minister Mustafa and Natural Resources Minister the Honourable Vikram Bharat met residents of the logging community on Friday. Kokwani is one of the worst hit areas with some homes completely inundated. The immediate task of the government now is to ensure a few things that our people have food to eat, that we drain the water off the land as quickly as possible, that our people has been provided with medical facilities and pure water. And as the government, we will work with you to ensure people are restored to their former state, that you go back to your farmland, that you go back to your logging concession, that you go back to your mining activity, that you go back to work so that you can provide for your family. We are committed to that. Meanwhile, the health minister says the Maibikuri Cottage Hospital in East Burbese Quarantine Region 6 will soon get much-needed infrastructural and equipment upgrades. During a visit to the medical facility on Friday, Minister Anthony assured staff that the hospital will be upgraded to serve the community more efficiently. This hospital has been around for some time and has been serving this community for a while. And one of the things that we want to do is to make sure that we improve the services that we are offering here. And so as I was saying to the regional chairman uh, early this morning, is that the government has set aside uh, some additional resources, uh, some of which would be utilized particularly at this hospital to complete some rehabilitation works at this hospital. With respect to infrastructural upgrades, Minister Anthony said there will be a complete separation of the male and female wards. The Maibikuri community was among several in Region 6 recently affected by flooding. As such, Minister Anthony also provided the Neighborhood Democratic Council with 300 treated mosquito nets for families in the community. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.